let's go to Robert Charles, the former uh, Assistant Secretary of State under President Bush, 43. Um, Secretary, always great to see you. Um, I, I was mentioning uh, the G7 certainly talking tough uh, and warning Russia. Uh, but I'm, I'm thinking of Russia, and I'm thinking of probably it being one of the most sanctioned countries on the planet, and it has not one bit at all affected his provocative nature. So will this? No, I mean, I'll be honest with you, uh, Neil. You've lived a long time, seen a lot of this uh, back and forth. This is a gut check moment for the United States and for NATO. I mean, uh, you know, we go back in time and we look at August 2012, where Obama, Biden said, hey, there's a red line, and if you cross it in Syria, big things will happen and nothing happened. And then you look at 2014, when uh, we gave them, I think, Ukraine, we gave maybe 46 million in, um, in uh, non-lethal aid, and, and, and Russia said, so what? Uh, as you mentioned a moment ago, this is one of the most sanctioned uh, countries in the world. So credibility is everything here. And frankly, the Biden administration credibility on this has got to hold. If it doesn't hold, China, Iran, everybody else is looking. And the sad thing is it's also it's sort of concentric circles of credibility being tested, because if you go out one circle, this is NATO's credibility being tested. There are sort of faux refugees presently being pushed up against Latvia, Lithuania, uh, Poland. And I, you know, if, 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 if Putin gets away with uh, doing whatever he wants to here, the question is, what's the limit then? I mean, ultimately, it means that NATO's not standing strong. So with 48% of the natural gas that Europe uses coming from Russia, and probably more of that with Nord Stream 2 now having been approved by, you know, by Biden, at the end of the day, this is, this is a very consequential moment. It's, does the United States and NATO stand strong? Uh, and say you cannot do this and we really will follow through? Or is this another paper tiger? You know, um, Secretary, I'm wondering if how much is coordinated between China and Russia as well. Now, I know the two leaders, Xi Jinping of China, of course, Vladimir Putin of Russia, are going to have this virtual call. I think it's a virtual call on Wednesday. But how much of it is, is China saying, all right, you keep him busy in Ukraine, I'll keep him busy, uh, you know, the South China Sea, and then and taunting Taiwan, et cetera, and we'll just confuse the hell out of them? Well, I think it's actually more complicated than that, Neil, although exactly down the path that you just mapped, uh, I suspect very strongly that uh, Russian and uh, Chinese diplomats and military personnel talk every day. Uh, there are a lot of chess pieces that have been moved around on this board already. And what you see essentially in Taiwan is that the United States has provided lethal defensive capability and is late to the party, a little too little, a little too late, I think, saying that we'll defend them. Uh, you know, we were behind Australia, for God's sakes. Uh, and then back up two steps and you look over here at Ukraine and you see, again, a question about, well, is the United States going to provide lethal aid? If they are, when is that going to happen? A little too little, a little too late. Uh, I think this is a coordinated uh, chess game. And as just as Richard Nixon played the China card against the Soviet Union, I think Russia and China are very deftly playing their cards uh, against us. And I think if we're not smart enough to see that, if we're not playing two moves ahead, uh, we're going to get cornered, and so will NATO. Um, I, I would always think, too, I know we talk about the, the idea, Secretary, that, that you know, the, these countries, both China and, you know, Russia act, it, even in, in the face of potential economic, you know, retaliation, they keep doing what they're doing. So, so they don't think beyond those measures will do anything, I, I suspect. Is that right? Is that hunch right? Yeah. You know, Neil, you spend a lot of time in, in, in economics, and actually that's where this warfare is really afoot. I mean, yes, there could be troop movements and, and that, but, but, you know, a little bit of the, uh, the give and go and the back and forth and the putting them on the border and, in frankly, against NATO countries, a lot of that is intended to secure economic advantage. And that's the same thing, by the way, I suspect, long term by China. So your, your point is well made. And I, I think a lot of this is they've looked at what we've done in the past. Number one, Biden is not a good coalition builder. Uh, number two, his word has not been kept. Number three, you look at how he behaved in Afghanistan, and they say, "Man, he's afraid of the Taliban. <laughs> why would he? Why would he do anything uh, to uh, sort of put us, us in harm's way? Uh, he hasn't got the, you know, he hasn't got the gumption to go forward." So, you know, I think this is a real test. This is a gut check moment, and uh, and it, it, yeah, I mean, they're very dependent. The Europeans are dependent on Russian energy. They'll be more dependent a year from now. 
um, is this a, a realignment moment? Is this a moment when, you know, a lot of these European countries are saying, is the United States with us? Are they leading? Are they going to guide this process? Or are they just going to fall by the wayside and let Russia do what they want and ultimately let China do what they want? I think it's a critical moment. Very quickly, what I, what I ha have you on, on, on this, Robert, one thing that came up is that China will continue testing, uh, you know, what we're going to do about Taiwan, not by invading Taiwan, but maybe in invading some of those islands that I guess are administered by Taiwan. There's a distinction and a difference. If we do nothing, if it were to do that, then what? So you, you, you point out sort of the wisdom of Edmund Burke. All it takes for evil to prevail is for good people to do nothing. And that's the same in international affairs. I think what you see right now is, you know, history is made by inches. And so what you see now is intimidation. Uh, Russia and China, and perhaps even more aggressively China, are going to try to push their own economic agenda and their own national security advantage at every turn, even when it's unjust, even against a country that is as sovereign and independent really should be as Taiwan. And so what you see here is uh, an incremental effort, essentially, to um, uh, to pressure them into into uh, concessions. Wow. You know, Robert, I always learn a lot. You're one smart dude. Uh, Robert Charles, the former Bush 43 Assistant Secretary.